Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from greenergrass.com, and if you've been around this channel for any amount of time, you realize I travel a lot. I'm on 100, 125 planes every year, and I've started to notice patterns about certain dilemmas that travelers, including me, face. Now, it's all relative, let's face it. These are certainly first world problems. Never forget how fortunate I am to get to travel, and I hope the same for you. But let's talk about what some of these are. Number one. The window shade. Now, I am an AVE geek, and I absolutely love looking out the window. But there have been a number of times I've been on flights where, for example, uh, the sun is shining right in my seatmate's face. Or um, I think about my Singapore Airlines A380 flight. Everybody on board really wanted to sleep, even though it was a daytime flight. Every window shade was down, so I felt obligated to put mine down as well, out of respect for them. So I did. Now here's, I think, the answer to the dilemma. What do you do with a window shade? If you're sitting in the window, you own it. And if you want to keep it up, that's your call. Now, I choose to be a little sensitive to the people around me, but I, I think on the one hand, you really don't have to be. If you own that window, you own that window. But what do you think? As with each of these dilemmas, I'm gonna ask you to leave a comment with your thoughts. What do you, who owns the window shade? Number two. Who owns the armrest? Now, I believe that if you're in the window seat, you have the advantage of, of the window armrest. If you're in the aisle seat, you have the advantage of the aisle armrest. But if you're in the middle, what do you do? I think you, little, you get a little extra armrest real estate. And that is by having both of the center armrests. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe that doesn't make any sense, but it seems to me if you're in the middle, you get both. But what do you think? Who owns the great armrest debate? Number three. Seat recline. Oh my gosh. I have seen way too many tragedies when it comes to aggressive seat recline. I think no further than my good friend Paul Stewart's laptop on his flight from Washington, D.C. out to L.A. Uh, with American Airlines on a 737. That laptop, may it rest in peace, died a tragic death because of an aggressive seat recliner. I hope that's not one of you. Look. If you're gonna re re recline the seat, all I ask is that you do it slowly and a little respectfully. If you wanna do it with extra bonus points, just turn around and let me know you're about to do it. I believe the feature exists and so you have the right to use it. It's like a window shade. If it's yours, you can use it. There's a reason the airline put it on there. But just do it slowly. If people come back too aggressively, there's risk for, for um, damaging laptops or, or just causing disruption to the person behind you. Now, here's a key caveat to seat recline. During mealtime, I believe the seat should not be reclined. If people are eating, don't recline the seat because it just makes it that much more challenging for them to do so. Number four. And this is a major dilemma. Interacting with your seatmates. Now look. Um, I'm an extrovert. There's a reason I have a YouTube channel. I like interacting with people. Uh, however, in a confined space like an airplane, I believe that should be limited pretty severely. I've been in my fair share of situations, and I'm sure you have too, where you got Talkity McTalkerson next to you, and you're trying to sit there and, and enjoy you know, maybe a book or just looking out the window or whatever, and you got some guy telling you his life story. I, I, I got no time for that. I'm sure it's lovely. I'm sure that that person has a wonderful life that I'd like to hear more about at another time, but not when I'm confined in this space and I can't get away from the guy. Anyway, social interaction with your seatmates. Let's limit that. Let's limit that. Number five. And this is a biggie. Food on a plane. Now, I've got no problem with somebody bringing food on the plane. I think, uh, you know, frankly, if you're dealing with an airline with a buy on board program, those prices are inflated. And airport prices, let's face it, they're already inflated on top of it. So if you want to bring uh, food on an airplane, go for it. One caveat, though, don't bring the stinky stuff. I mean, this is, again, a small space. There's no need for, I don't know, 
curry or whatever. Like, let's just be sensitive to the olfactory senses of our fellow passengers. Don't bring the stinky stuff. Okay, so what do you think? Are, are, these, uh, are these reasonable uh, compromises when it comes to these dilemmas, or do you have a different perspective? Regardless, leave me a comment. I really want this video to be an interactive one. I want to hear your thoughts on these travel dilemmas, these true first world problems that those of us who are in the air a lot face. Let me know what you think, and between now and the next time, see you in the sky.